Hello whistleblowers everywhere. Uh, today is a tune breakdown of a very well-known jig called Donnybrook Fair. It's also known as uh, the joys of my life or the joy of my life. Um, yeah, it's got a couple of uh, titles, but it's most commonly known as Donnybrook Fair and it's a perennial session favourite played often at sessions um lots of these well-known jigs are some people think that they're maybe overplayed and sort of shy away from playing some of these tunes like this one uh and things like the blarney pilgrim and that but i think they're great tunes and they're session favorites because they're great tunes they play well um they're a nice fun way of playing them uh lots of chances for ornamentation or they stand up well without any or even just a little bit of ornamentation. Yeah, they work well uh, just as they are. So it's up to you as always as to how you want to ornament these tunes. I'll show you uh, some of the things that I like to do in terms of ornamentation, uh, but really it's up to you. So as always, what we do, I'm gonna play through at 60 with my click at 60, um, and I'm gonna play through uh, pretty much the same as what's written, the, the written version. Uh, separating notes which are the same with cuts or possibly even a tap or two uh, depends what the music is asking for so if it's got two notes which are the same then I'll separate it with a cut the second note with a cut if it's got three notes which are the same that I tend to do is cut the first uh, play the first cut the second and then tap the third one just so we can get uh, a little bit of variation going so here we go, Donnybrook Fair. So the form of this jig is the A part is repeated twice. Uh, you go to the second time bar. Then the B part is played through. You repeat, but it's got an altered ending. So it's A, A, B, and then an altered B where we go up to that high B at the end. So, um, Again, with breathing, we'll have a look at where we can breathe in this. But for now, I'm just going to breathe uh, where I can. Uh, but we'll go into the breathing uh, when we do a bit more of a deep dive. But for now, I'm just going to breathe uh, at some sensible places. Um, there are a few places to breathe in here. But as I say, when you're playing it slowly, you might have to sort of adapt it. But here we go. So this is Donnybrook Fair at 60. One, two, one. So as usual with these tune breakdowns, um, what I'll do is I'll show you a version or we'll play through a version which is more or less the same as the what's written, uh, adding some cuts, um, possibly uh, a long roll or two, but it's pretty much going to be the same as what's written in the sheet music. Uh, once we've done that, I'll do uh, what I call a variation. So I'm going to add uh, a few little ornaments and make a few little changes. Um, to what's on the written music. And there's lots and lots you can do the, with this with variation, but I'll just show you a few little things that I uh, like to put in this. Uh, a lot more you can do, uh, but as usual, we won't go too crazy with the variations. We'll just do a few 
nice interesting ones so let's have a look from the top so we start on the anacrusis so anacrusis is just basically coming in not on the first beat of the bar but we come in on the last beat so we count one two three four five we come in on beat six so it goes six one like this one two three four five So right from the start, what I like to do is put a cut on the first G and put a cut on the first A. So we're going. And again with cuts, um, I tend to use, I cut the G with the A. You can use your top finger or you can even use that middle finger. So choose which note you're going to cut with. As I said in previous videos, as long as you're using a note which is above and it sounds nice and clean, it doesn't matter what note you're actually cutting with because you're not going to hear that note. It's a rhythmic interruption to the note. It's not the note itself. So it doesn't really matter. It's the rhythmic effect which we're after. So here we go. So cut the G, F, E, cut the A, G, A. Bar two. And again, separating the two E's with cuts. I mean, you can tongue them. But I prefer to use this, uh, finger articulation to separate the notes. So let's do those first two measures. And again. Now that time I put a cut on the B in the second bar and that's absolutely fine to do that. Yeah, it sounds good like that. So bar three. So again, you can cut the B. Or if you want to get flash, you can cut all those Bs. So you go cut the B, A, cut the se second B, G, A, cut the B. Or you could go. And then the last bar on the first line. And again, cutting the E to separate. So the last two measures on the first line. Right, let's try the whole of that first line. One, two. And again. So I then takes us to the G. So the dotted crotchet G or the dotted quarter note G. So this is a good place to put in a, sh a long roll. So we're going to go note, cut, tap on the G. Again, it depends, you can cut with whichever note above and I tap with this finger here. All of them work. So we want to get it one, two, three, note, cut, tap. And 
and then I'm going to cut the A so the second bar on the second line same thing again I'm going to cut the B and then cut the E cut the second D Then we've got the same figure. And again, cutting all those Bs. And then the first time bar. And we can put a short roll on the G. Now, with that little D, at the end you might want to drop that so you can get a breath um it's just a little and a cruise's little pickup note um it's not in essential and we're gonna have to drop some notes to get a breath and that would be a good one to drop um so second line and then brings us back to repeat so let's try that whole of the first part, nice and slowly. So again, don't worry too much about the breathing with this because we're not doing it up to speed. Um, we'll get some breathing in. So with that, the D and repeat so again in the second time bar We've got that high F, which is again a leading note. Um, now, if you want, you can drop that. Um, it's a good a note as any to drop there. We don't certainly. Um, what you could do is is just not put the roll on that G in the second time bar, and that way you can get that high F sharp. Um, if you do the full short roll, you're not going to have time to breathe and get that high F sharp. So it's a toss up between short roll, drop the F sharp or just cut the G, take a breath and then play the high F sharp. So decide which one you like to do the best. Right. So click set at 60. We're going to do the whole of the A part now. One, two, one. Now, getting the breathing, again, is going to be up to you as to where you need to breathe. So if I'm playing it at 60 and I want to get a nice breathing spot in, what I might do is at the end of the first line, because I really want to get that nice long roll in uh, at the beginning. So what I could do is... And then just go to... Yeah, so I'm missing off the D and the E. Or I could do just a short roll on the E. And then it gives me plenty of time then to get a decent breath. So I'll play it again, but this time I'm going to alter what's happening on the last bar and just do a short roll on the E, drop the D completely. So one...
we're going on to the B part and getting that little high F sharp in there. I'm just putting a cut on that G, shorting it slightly to get a breath in and then jumping up to that high F sharp, which brings us nicely onto the B part. So let's have a look at the B part now. So we're going to go from that high F sharp at the end of the second time bar. And what I'm going to do for the first bar on line three, I'm going to cut the high G and cut the high F. So again, so second bar on the third line. going to play that out as it is you can put a cut on the high G if you want it's cutting on a rather unusual place because it's a weak beat but there's nothing wrong with that so if you want to cut that high G yeah do it um, there's no rules to say it's, it's the wrong thing to do uh, and if you like the sound of that if you feel not happy with cutting on a weak beat then you don't have to but it's an option a lot of whistle players do um cutting is kind of a personal choice really and there's no wrong notes to cut on but some notes often cut which are the strong beats but you can cut on a weak beat like that high g on the beat number two uh, and it just adds a little kind of syncopated feel i quite like that And again with the third beat, third bar, sorry. So we've got the separation with cuts. So on the last measure on the third line, last bar on the third line. Now you can just tap to get that separation or you can go. Or, as I said, just tap. So, if you're doing the short roll on the E, you have to go. So you're doing two cuts on the E in rapid succession. Or, because I said you can just tap it. In fact, I'd be more inclined to just tap it because I want to get a breath there. So, yeah, fine if you want to short roll it, but I would just tap that E, that last E on the end of the third line. Because it's a good place for me to get a breath. So... Good place to breathe. End of a phrase. Excuse me. Uh, right, so. Breathe, and then we can get that high F sharp in. Um, again, what you could do um, is, if you wanted to do a short roll, uh, you could even drop that high F sharp. or even do a long roll. But you would have to tongue that E to get the separation for the long roll. Uh, okay, so we're on to the first time bar. So same thing again, we're gonna cut the G, gonna cut the F. Then we got, so I'm gonna put a cut at the end of those two 16th note semi-quavers. Sounds quite nice, that. And then we've got the ending. Uh, a 
again cutting all the Bs and then Now again, if you want to just cut the G, it gives you a chance to take, get a breath at the end of that line, which is a good place to breathe. So, which brings us on to the F sharp, and we're going to go back and repeat from the beginning of that third line. So let's do the first time round of the B part. And then we're going to repeat and do the first line and then jump to the second time bar. So we've already done the first line. <laughs> Breathe. And then we're going to go on to the last line, the second time bar. So we're going to cut the G's and cut the A's. Now, if you want, you can cut just the first one. Or you can cut the both G's and both A's. I quite like cutting them both. And then we're going to go all the way up to the high B with a cut. And then the same ending. And then just finish it. You could either do a long roll or just do it as a cut. So lots of different options there, right? So let's play through at 60 the um, the B part. One, two. So now that we've got A and B together, let's play through it at 60 with the cuts and that added long roll. One, two, one, two. So that's with some roll, well, one long roll in the second line, first bar on the second line, and the rest we just added some cuts and some taps. And again, yeah, think about your breathing spaces and think about how you're going to fit those in. We do need to make some adjustment, but it's important that the piece flows without it sounding broken up, and certainly we don't want to displace the beat. Right, so now we've got the basic version, let's have a look at what we can do with some variation. So, A part variations. So, um, what you might want to do at the beginning is to turn the G A G and the A G A 
into a long roll on the G and a long roll on the A. So we're going So what's written? Variation. So G cut tap A cut tap. Second line. So I'd keep that the same. Third bar, we've got. I'm going to do a long roll on the B. And then the last. And do a short roll. To finish that line off. So let's try that with the variation. faster of course the second line we're starting with a long roll and again you can do the same thing you can long roll the G long roll the A so Again, third bar and a short roll at the end. So I'm going to play it through as written and then the second time I'm going to play it through with the variations with the added rolls. So here we go. speed that up you can hear the difference and I think you'll agree that those rolls sound lovely on that just gives it a nice rolling kind of Fluidi fluidity, I think, is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, so, yeah, give it a go. Try adding some of those long rolls in. Now, remember, always keep the note cut tap even when you're learning to do the long rolls, yeah? You don't want to do this. Yeah, that's not how we do it. It's got to be even. If you practice them evenly in rhythm, when you come to speed it up, then they will be even and in rhythm. If you practice them unevenly, then when you come to speed it up, they just sound rubbish. So always practice your ornaments when you're first learning them. Practice them slowly and evenly. When you come to speed it up sounds so much better yeah so really make sure when you're doing your rolls practice them evenly when you speed it up then you can add the kind of six eight lilt to them yeah so you can go For now, as you're learning rolls, always keep them even, yeah, as you practice. So let's have a look at the second half now, what the variations we can do. So what's written? Now I can 
can put that little semi-quaver 16th note um, figure that's in the first time bar, I can put it there as well. Uh, so I can roll the G, roll the F. And you can do a little triple tongue if you want there. Um, and then the next two bars. So again, I can change that. The last bar, I can do a long roll on the B and a long roll on the E. And miss out the F sharp, so it could go. Now, if you need to breathe, instead of doing the long roll on the E, you can do a short roll, so it sound like this. Or just tap. Probably easier just to tap. Or you could just do the long roll and then get the F sharp in there. So first time bar, you can do long roll G, long roll F again if you want. And again, you can roll the B. You could even roll the G if you want. It depends how much you want to vary it, but let's try it just with the rolls we've done. So first time bar. Either roll the B, roll the G, or just roll the B, and then play the G as written. Or... And then we go back, do it all again. Now, second time bar, roll the G, roll the A, and then cut that high B. Now that sounds great when you do the two rolls on that. Again. Roll the B. So let's run through the repeat into the second time bar. So, to finish off with, I'll play it through twice at 60. First time I'm going to play it as is with the cuts. Second time I play it through, I'm going to add some variation that we've talked about. So, 60, here we go. One, two.
as ever, choose the ornamentation which you prefer. Um, choose the variations that you prefer. And again, these are just suggestions. You are in charge of how you go about ornamenting this and you can play it straight through without adding any ornaments at all. And that's absolutely fine. Ornaments are the icing on the cake, as I've often said, and it's up to you how you use them. Use as many or as little as you, as you wish, really. It's up to you. So that's about it for this tune breakdown of Donnybrook Fair. Um, if you found it useful, helpful in any way, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the Whistleblowers YouTube channel. Uh, always new content coming up and it's really good for me to have as many subscribers as possible because that means that I can then put up some more tune breakdowns, I can put up tutorials uh, on technique, um, I can also do uh, some whistle reviews, in fact I've got a whistle review coming up fairly shortly uh, on Killarney whistles and um, so I'm going to do a Killarney review fairly shortly. Um, but until then, um, as I said, please like, subscribe, share. And if you've got any suggestions for tune breakdowns or anything you'd like me to cover in a tutorial, please leave it in a comment or, um, yeah, leave it in a comment for me uh, and I'll get back to you and hopefully I'll be able to take all those suggestions into consideration. So thanks once again and uh, I'll leave you with Donnybrook Fair. <laughs>